Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Walnut Grove, which is from designer Tuco Ducalio, who also designed Eclipse, which for a lot of people was the best game of, what was it, 2011, I think, the year it came out. You know, I, a lot of people love Eclipse. Eclipse was a huge, huge monster hit. But Walnut Grove came out the same year, and for Jens and my money, this was Tuco's game of the year. We love Walnut Grove, whereas Eclipse, we could, we could take it or leave it. And so I'm going to try and demonstrate today why we like it so much. Okay, so right off the bat, here's the board, and you know, this game you could really kind of sum it up as the uh, Little House on the Prairie, the board game, or the Waltons, the board game, because we are in the American Pioneer West, and you can see there's this, this local town where there's lodges and hotels and saloons, and you can do all kinds of stuff here in the town. You can hire additional workers for your homestead, or get improvements for your homestead, or upgrades. You can you know go to the church and get you know charitable donations. You can sell, sell stuff at the marketplace. There's a bunch of stuff you can do, but that's only half the game. The other half is down here at at your homestead. And let's just take a look at mine here, as this is now set up at the beginning of the game. Now I got, there's, a, there's enough of these homestead tiles for each player, and each one gives players a random starting worker. This black pawn represents me. You know, I'm up here in the big house, you know, up on the ranch house, and I've got one hired hand who lives out here in the covered wagon. And because my board was, uh, I got a blue one. Jen, meanwhile, she starts pretty much the same situation as me, except she's got a yellow one because hers was the yellow starting. Also, I forgot to start this upright. Each of us starts with two copper coins over here in storage. And I didn't get two for myself. I gotta find some copper coins in here somewhere. Here's one, here's one. Okay, there we go. Got to set things up. All right, and all right. So everybody starts with two copper coins, and everybody also starts with one piece of lumber out here in their nearby forest they could harvest for wood. And so that situation, we're both in the same spot, except that Jen starts with a yellow worker, I start with a blue. And actually, that puts me at a slight advantage in this first round for reasons I'll show in a second. But before we get started, each of us has to put our little oops, uh oh, here we go. Ah, almost lost it. Our little town worker in town so that at a certain point in a round we will actually get to do stuff in town. And let's say I'm first. Actually, I think the rules say it's the youngest, so really it should be Jen, but what the heck, I'll go first. I get to choose whether my town guy is gonna start over here in this spot or over here in this spot. And really what this decision is, means is for the first couple of rounds of the game, probably, I'll have kind of access to all the stuff on this side of the street. Or if I start over here, I'll have access to the stuff on this side of the street. And I think I'll, I'll start over here. And then Jen, she's got you. She can either be next in line, so she has next dibs on everything on this side of the street, or she can start over here, so she's got first dibs on everything on this side of the street. And she'll go ahead and she'll do that. Okay, so now we're totally set up, ready to go. I see. Actually, I should say, as part of setup, it, here in the lodge, the saloon, and the hotel, a random assortment of additional workers showed up. You can see there's more, but in a two-player game, there's only six on the board. These are the only six workers that will ever get added to the game. Also, these are the only four upgrades, and these are the only four improvements. Now, these improvements, they create in-game goals, like this one. If I were to actually able to get this, I would score an additional point for every completely fenced pasture I've got at the end of the game. Normally pastures are worth one. Completely fenced pastures are worth one, but if I had this, they'd be worth two. This gives me an additional point for every worker I have at the end of the game. This gives me an additional point for every upgrade I've got, you know, these square tiles. And this gives me a point for every tile that is in my biggest contiguous pasture. So if I get this, I want to have a really big gigantic pasture if I can. All right, so the, and you know, in a different game, different objectives, my guys. You can see there's are a whole bunch of different ones, so you never really know quite what combination is going to be in a game. But anyway, this is the setup we've got here. Let's go on ahead and start playing. Now, this, di this game takes place over eight rounds or eight years. You can see there's eight discs here. And we are in the first round. And this represents everything that's going to happen in this year. It's kind of a nice turn order 
uh, summary. The first thing that happens every round in the spring is we draw tiles. Do we get in this and in this year we'll get to draw three and keep one. In other years we might draw four and keep two or whatever. Then we move over here into summer and this is when we do our harvest. And this year in the first round there's going to be a, an extra bountiful harvest of fish, which is what blue cubes are. Then we move into the fall. That's when we get to do our stuff in town and buy stuff and sell stuff and hire workers and whatever. And this year if we try to sell dairy cubes, the white cubes, we they are worth extra money because I guess there's going to be a shortage of dairy this year. And then finally it comes time for winter and that's when we have to feed our workers and this year this is why Jen's at a slight disadvantage this year the yellow workers require two food instead of one so Jen's guy is going to require two food whereas my blue guy is only going to require one also it's going to be an extra cold winter this year and so we need extra lumber to you know to run the fires or else our workers might freeze to death so those are that represents this year. Let's get going. And like I said, the first thing that happens is in spring, everybody, and everybody does this simultaneously, can draw three tiles and keep one. So let's see what I draw. I draw one, two, three. If I can get them out of the bag here. There we go. One, two, three. There we go. Let's see what we got. All righty. Mm. Now remember, this is a year where fish is going to be a bounty. So if I could, I really do want to generate more fish. Unfortunately, none of the tiles I got have fish on them. So I'm not going to be able to make my lake any bigger. And the bigger a lake or your grain fields or your forest or your cow pastures or your rocks, your, uh, your area where you can get, where you can basically get, collect stone, the bigger they are, the more they produce. But I'm not going to be able to produce any extra water because I did, or any extra fish because I didn't draw any lake pieces. But what do I want to do now? Let's see. So, for instance, as an example, okay, like I could say I could take this piece, and now uh, this is not like Carcassonne where you have to match pieces up. I could take this piece. I don't have to put it here to match my existing yellow. I could put it like this if I wanted and not match up at all. But interestingly, if by doing this, even though I didn't get a consistent matching, um, what do you call it? faster, I did get a fully enclosed one, you know, completely surrounded by fences. And that means this will be worth one point at the end of the game, or maybe two points if I had this upgrade. So that's pretty cool. But I'm not, I, I, but it, there is a definitely a benefit for matching colors if you can. And so looking at what I got, this might be my best move because it keeps my forest nice and big and, you know, continually lets it be ringed by fences. If you can, you really want to keep them ringed by fences, but you know, sometimes some tiles don't have fences on them. And I could potentially, in a future turn, get um, some more rock pieces that will fit into this space. And so that's actually pretty nice. Is there a better one? Do I want to build... Yeah, this one's not so good because unfortunately the forest is in the wrong direction or the mountains are in the wrong direction. That one's also equally quite wrong. Yeah, I'm going to go with this one. I'm just going to try and keep things lined up nice and neat. All right, and so those are gone. I drew three and kept one. Now, Jen, she's going to draw three as well. Let's see what she gets. One, two, three. All right, and I keep bumping my... There we go. So what is she going to do? Ba, ba, ba. Hmm, so now she... Oh, so she could completely enclose her lake. This lake is now considered to be two tiles big, which means it'll generate two fish. And it just it's fortunate. This happens to have space for two fish. So that's not bad. And as you can see, this is a really nice, it lines up well with her cow pastures for the future. But remember, she knows she needs more food than normal because this guy is going to want two wheat. Now currently, if she were to, you know, when the harvest comes, if she puts a worker, you know, either a worker, herself or her, because again, the black ponds represent us. We live up in the big house. So Jen could, you know, go and work the fields herself. Since this this uh, grain field is only one tile big. It wasn't extended like, say, by doing this. Since it's only one tile big, it would only generate one grain cube. If Jen did this, though, since it's two tiles big, it would generate two grain cubes. And that's what Jen needs to feed her people. And, you know, and now this is a nice one, too, because, again, it can kind of help to expand the... You know, the cow pastures. But the downside to this is it has no fence. So Jen is not really delivering on, you know, because if you can, you want to have parcels of land that are completely fenced. And since this one does a nice fencing action, that's pretty cool. What that? Jen's going to take that one and she'll try and find another way to feed her folks. Now, you know, the rest of the tiles, they go back in the bag and that's it. We are done 
with spring, we drew three, we kept one, and now we move on to summer. Well, we're going to harvest. And remember, this summer, there's going to be extra blue if you try to harvest blue, if you try to catch fish. Now, again, we do this simultaneously, but I'll just go on ahead and go first. I've got two workers. I can put them in any field I want, and that field will generate, well, you know, I'll harvest that field. And so, you know, because there's this excess of blue, I definitely want to put somebody in the lake. And now, I could put either of my workers. Colors do not have to match. I don't have to put this blue in the lake. I could put this blue someplace else. I'm going to put myself over here in the lake. And now, normally, since my lake is only one tile big, you know, this whole thing represents a tile. Since it's one tile big, I only get one fish, and I would put it in any of these, you know, these spaces on the tile. But, but, because it's a harvest year, I get an additional one. So I'm gonna get generate two fish, and now what else am I gonna generate? Now it's great because remember, I have to feed my guy fish, and I'm gonna have extra fish left over. What am I gonna have this guy do? Since it's gonna be a cold winter, I'm gonna have him come over here, and I'm gonna generate some more wood, some more firewood. So because my forest is two tiles big, it generates two cubes. One of them will go in this space, but now I have no more spaces in the forest, so the other one has to go into storage. And at the beginning of the game, I've got this one shed, so I've got four storage spaces. Man, if I want to store more stuff, as you can see, I could build additional sheds by buying these upgrades in town. But I'll worry about that later. So that's it. I've done my work. I harvested two fish because of the bounty, and I harvested two wood because I have a big forest. Now what's Jen going to do? Let's see, she definitely needs wheat, so she'll have, a, we'll have her wheat guy come over here and generate, unfortunately, only one cube. Because, remember, this field is only one tile big. And you know what? She doesn't want to miss out on the largesse of extra fish, so she'll come over here and she will generate fish as well. Now, she gets one bonus because of the, the season bonus. And this lake generates two because it's two tiles big, so she gets one. And again, the, the, the lake is now full, so the other one comes over here into storage. All right, so we're done. We have finished the second step, the harvest. Now we go into town, and if we want to sell dairy, although nobody generated any dairy cubes, so we can't sell any dairy. But if we had any dairy, we could sell it at two to one. But we don't. So. Now, uh, we're both in town. This is the only part of the game where players have to play in a prescribed order. You can't just do everything at the same time. And the turn order is going to be determined by your position relative to town hall. Whoever is closest to town hall gets to go first. And you know, right now, for me, if I wanted to get to town hall, I'd have to go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces to get to town hall. Jen would have to go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 or 15 spaces. So I am closer to Town Hall, and that means I get to go first. So let's go. I pick this up, and now I can put my guy on any space on the board I want. The only caveat is, I, from wherever I am, I start going clockwise, and I eventually stop at a store where I want to do some business. And if I keep going, if I cross Town Hall to keep going, I have to pay a buck in taxes. And then if I keep going and I cross over here the church, this space, I have to pay a buck in tithes and I keep going. So really at this point, since I don't want to spend any money if I don't have to, I really means I kind of have access to this side of the street. Eventually you can only go clockwise. So sooner or later, you, you know, you'll have to pay your taxes. Sooner or later, you'll have to pay your tithe, but I don't want to do it if I don't have to. Now, let's see, looking at the stuff I could do on this side of the road, I could just come here right to the church and I could pick up a couple of cubes, my choice. It's like charity, it's like a donation from the church. This is a market, I could come over here and I could sell brown, white, or blue cubes for coins. I already have two coins, and you know, my storage is almost full, so I don't think I wanna do that. I could come over here and I could buy one of these upgrades. It requires three stone and a grain. Obviously I don't have that, so that'll be a little bit later. I could come over here. And with one wood and one dairy, which I don't have, I could get one of these upgrades. I could get this upgrade, for instance, and um, upgrade one of my covered wagons to a hut. And that means my workers will stay warmer in the winter. Or I could buy one of these, and then I'd have more storage available. But I'm not doing any of those. I'm going to come over here to Joe's Saloon. Yeehaw! Where, if I pay one dairy, I could hire one of these cow pokes, and I'll have additional workforce. Now, I don't have any dairy, as you may recall, but 
My coins, and it doesn't matter whether they're copper, silver, or gold, which is you know hidden information on the other side. At the beginning of the game, they're both copper. It doesn't matter what type they are. Any coin can be used as a wild card for any cube. So since I don't have any dairy, I'm going to give up one of my coins and say, hey, I'm using this as a dairy cube. Goes back in the cup, and I'm hiring a guy. And I will hire this yellow guy. I now have a third worker. Now this guy won't work for me this year, so I don't put him on my board, I put him off to the side to represent next year he will come and join my labor force. And that also means this year I don't have to feed him. But I'll, next year I'll be able to work, use him and I'll, be, I'll have to feed him too. So now that was my one action in town and now Jen, she's got the same choice. And if she had come over here then you know she would have been blocked out of this, she wouldn't have been able to get here. But she's over here, now she wants she could hire somebody too. She could come all. She could come over here to Dakota Lodge, and for two wheat, she could hire one of these guys. Or she come over here, and for two fish, she could hire somebody at the hotel. That's interesting because she got three fish, so she has enough excess fish to hire one of those guys. Huh. That's interesting. Hmm. But you know, the more you hire, the more you have to feed them, and the more wood you have to burn to keep them warm too. Does she want to do something else? I think so. I think, yeah, she's going to get on the street and she's going to walk over here to the carpenters where she has to pay one fish and one stone and that'll let her get an upgrade. Now, she already has plenty of fish, so she'll take one of the fish out of this storage house. And now, boom, because she's done that, she has gotten herself some more storage space. So that's nice. She's going to take this fish. It goes back to the supply. And she needs a stone. Now, again, she doesn't have a stone, but you can use a coin as a wild card. She's going to give up one of her coppers. It does a wild card. She's going to get an upgrade. She can either get a, a barn or a shed that will let her store more stuff, but she's not going to do that. She's going to get a hut, a worker's hut, and she is going to upgrade this wagon from what it was going to be, uh, you know, this is where her yellow worker lives. Now he doesn't live in a covered wagon where he could, where he'd freeze and Jen needs to burn firewood in the winter to keep him warm. Now he lives in a hut where he no longer needs to burn firewood because he'll be nice and warm in the hut or the, the worker's shed or whatever you want to call it. So that was Jen's town action. Okay, so we're done with town actions. Nobody took advantage of selling dairy and now it's winter time. It is time to feed and keep our workforce warm. So everybody comes home and me, I go back to my nice warm place where there's plenty of food. I don't have to worry about feeding this pond or keeping it warm. But this guy comes back over here and he's so cold and so hungry. So he's blue. Now this is an interesting little peccadillo. Blue, go um, blue workers will only eat fish. So he must be fed with a blue cube. White workers, or I'm sorry, this isn't white, this is yellow. Yellow workers will of course only eat grain. So he'd have to be fed, but he doesn't have, don't have to worry about him. I don't have to feed him till next year. So anyway, I'm going to use one of my two fish and I am going to feed this guy. And now I have to give up one of my wood to uh, you know burn for firewood so you won't freeze. So that took care of that fire. But however, remember this is a more harsh than normal winter. I have to pay w one additional firewood in addition to whatever I already had to pay. So I unfortunately have to give up another cube. Now that's okay because remember I generated, because I had a bigger force, I generated two cubes. So I had enough, I had to burn two wood to keep this guy warm, and I had to feed him. That's it. And we're done. Now Jen, she comes, everybody comes home, this guy goes to his nice hut. Jen goes to her home, she's fine. This guy does not need to burn any wood to stay warm because he's in a hut, but he does need food. And remember, yellow is double hungry this year, so Jen has to give up. She has one grain, she doesn't have any more. She's got a choice now. She could give up her other wild card, um, which is you know it's a shame because you know it's really really great to have these as wild cards. Plus, you need them to be able to cross the line and pay your taxes. She could do that, or she could depend on the kindness of her neighbors and get a little care package. Whenever you cannot afford, actually, wait, do you have an option to do that, or do you have to use your? No, no, yeah. Whenever you cannot afford to do what you need to do to feed your people, you can or to either feed your people or pay your taxes. You cannot take these to buy stuff. But if you are required to pay taxes or required to feed or keep your workers warm, you can take a care package from your neighbors. And what this means is this is a stand-in for the wood you didn't have or the food you didn't have or the money you didn't have. And you take this. Now at the end of the game, this is going to be worth 
you're going to lose two points for having taken this thing. But at any time before the end, this is a loan basically, at any time before the end of the game, if you want to give up three cubes, you can get rid of this loan and basically you can give up three. So basically what this is, is, is a long-term loan. Jen could take this and this would be a replacement for her other yellow. And then later on, if she gives up three excess cubes, she gets rid of this loan. So really, Jen could be, you know, in the future, she could pay three cubes for the one cube she's missing right now. So she's going to do that. She's going to take a loan, a friendly, you know, a friendly care basket from her neighbors, and that took care of the other yellow she needed. And so she still got some money left over. Okay. Oh, but right. She, um, the, you know, this guy is also going to be cold. Now, there's, um, he doesn't need to burn any wood because of this. But remember, since it's still a cold year, she still has that extra one she has to burn so she has to give up a cube as well all right and that was it that was one whole year and at the end of the year i've got two i've got three workers now this guy moves in and so now i've got two guys to feed and i need two firewood to keep these guys warm jen only has one guy to feed and doesn't need any firewood i've got um two cubes left over and, and a coin jen's got two cubes left over and a coin but she also has a loan but, you know, over the course of the game, this is going to, this upgrade here, there's seven more rounds. This is seven pieces of wood she does not need to provide anymore for the rest of the game. Whereas me, I've just doubled my wood needs to 14 wood. So, do not feel bad for Jen, even though I've got more workers. She just basically, by building this thing in the first round, got seven wood for free. Effectively. Alright, so that was a full year. So, we, we move this away. We find out what the second year cast offers. Ah, and this year, we get to draw four tiles, keep two. There will be excess dairy generated. Wood can be sold for better than normal. And my Mr. Blue over here will require more food than normal. And we're ready to go again. We start drawing tiles, we do everything, and we can keep going. We do this for eight rounds, getting upgrades, you know, getting more and more workforce, building up uh, our, you know, our homestead with more and more tiles, harvesting more stuff. And at the end of the game, we score a lot of points for fenced areas, for our workers, for um, coins, if we've managed to get any coins that aren't copper, etc., etc. But if you want to see some of that, you can hit the button that's on screen for extended play or hit the other button for final thoughts, your choice, in five, four, three, two, one.